This article dated May 7th at around noon says that Intera Capital sold another $1.9 million worth of ape shares. I think this fits in the narrative that we're going to talk about here in this video. And I think it fits this video pretty well to highlight this in the beginning of where AMC stock is likely to go in this next upcoming week, aka the Sunday night price prediction video. Now, why isn't Terra Capital almost on a daily basis selling ape shares as of recently? Well, I think it's pretty clear. They made a trade that honestly for them has worked out pretty well, but will not likely continue to work out very well. I think the possibility or the probability I should say, of this conversion happening is getting smaller and smaller as we get closer to a new statement from the judge, or in other words, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt within hedge funds, within arbiters of this trade is becoming more and more doubtful, right? Becoming more and more uncertain. And I think that is why they are slowly selling millions of sh of of shares almost on a daily basis. And I find this interesting because the next court date is June 29th or June 30th. I, I don't believe we have an actual confirmed day as of yet. Those are the preliminary dates that we have gotten so far, but we're going to get an announcement here. I would imagine within the next two weeks. Because the judge said she's open to wrapping this up by the end of June. That means we're going to get some kind of statement from the special mastery. And their recommendation, the judge is likely to take into effect. And I think that recommendation is that common stockholders are not in favor of this settlement. And I think this is important, important to point out because some people have said this. That... You had about 50 million common stockholders vote no for these proposals for this reverse split. You had about 132 million yes votes. Now, there's 134 million institutional shares that are owned by institutions. So a lot of those probably did vote yes to this. They probably are a part of this arbitrage trade. They wanted to see this happen. But only about 50 million actual retail investors likely voted for this. All in all, you add these two numbers together, roughly put 180 million, just round up to 200 million votes total for this. That means about 70% of common stockholders did not vote at all. So what if retail did vote? What if there was a common shareholder vote that took place? Well, I think that would give you, you know, bigger numbers towards a no vote here. And I think that's ultimately where we are heading is for a revote of common stockholders, because whether or not you want this reverse split to happen, whether or not this um, was done with due process or done legally by selling over 20% of the voting power to one entity without shareholder approval, that is typically not allowed in the business world, they can acquire, they can just buy outright 20% voting power. They could buy 20% of, of AMC or APE, but you're, you can't make a deal to sell that in exchange for a yes vote for a proposal from the company. So long story short, I think it's pretty clear that retail investors by and large did not want this to happen. And that's the messages you have been getting sent to the courts. Now it only seems seems probable to me you get a revote and that revote would cause more fear uncertainty and doubt in hedge funds minds that maybe this trade would not go through and i think that's why intera capital continues to sell more and more ape stock right and even started to buy uh amc as of recently as well they're obviously doing a lot of option strategies and things are pr pretty fluid with their position as you can see that they they sell a lot of their position almost on a daily basis every couple of days at the very minimum uh so you can't draw any definitive conclusions but it looks like that doubt is starting to creep in 
Now, here in this video, we're going to get into the price prediction as well for AMC, a direct range in which I think AMC will move to, but it's important to understand where the data is with AMC as well. What's going to be happening in the markets this week that could influence this price prediction? And again, what historically happens after AMC earnings tends to be a rally of about 50 to 150%. And this time around, you look a lot more bullish than other times. So that might set us up for an even bigger rally. Nonetheless, AMC's dollar amount currently sold short $773 million. Estimated short interest of free float at 25.29%. 33% free flow out on loan, 170.4 million shares that are currently out on loan with days to cover sitting at about 4.88, trailing three month cost to borrow fees. This is an average of 228.86% and you have 100% share utilization. Keep in mind, these are the highest numbers that you have seen throughout this whole entire trade. Like you have not seen numbers that look like this at all. It hasn't happened yet with AMC. So we are in uncharted territory for AMC stock. That's a fact. You have not seen the short interest over 25% at all in this trade. You might have thought the short interest was high before and maybe, you know, with the illegal oh my gosh, with the illegal shorts that are, you know, out there still in my personal opinion that that is definitely remaining true. Uh Maybe the short interest was higher before illegally, but this is the highest legal short interest that you have seen on AMC stock, period. It does not get higher than this. Now, or it hasn't at least. Now, cost to borrow average, currently sitting at about 334%. Cost to borrow max, 339.1%. Cost to borrow minimum, 269.25%. Now, why are the cost to borrow fees still so high even after we just got earnings out of the way after all earnings should be a big catalyst where kind of like the options market implied volatility works heading into earnings or a major event you tend to get options that go up in value they could be calls they could be puts they all tend to go up in value heading into a major catalyst such as earnings that's because people start to make their bets they start to imply the move that could come after earnings same thing with cost to borrow rates. Cost to borrow rates typically do fall after earnings, but they're not this time around. And I think that just simply means expect a lot of volatility, expect some pretty big moves with AMC stock. Now, if we take a look at the amount of shares currently available to be lent out, that's sitting at about 2.9 million with cost to borrow fee of about 177%. So the numbers very elevated over here, a little bit more shares available to be lent out, but in the grand scope of things, I don't think this really affects all too much. You still have 100% share utilization, and that's because there's so many shares that are that are sold short right now. Even if you have a couple million that are available to be lent out, it's still a very low percentage of the overall float. And, and that's how the utilization is ultimately calculated. So when I look at the data here, what's it telling me? It's telling me expect a lot of volatility, expect big moves, and AMC stock is more prime than ever to seeing a short squeeze. Now, earnings were positive, right? They came in better than expectations. AMC's loss was again, better than expectations. And that did cause AMC stock at one point on Friday to be up a decent amount. If we take a look at the one minute candlestick chart, go ahead and zoom this out. You kind of sold off initially as the markets opened, but in pre-market, you hit a high of $6.20 per share. Hedge funds are really fearful of AMC above $6 per share. It's very obvious here, right? AMC opened at about $6.11 per share, and they shorted this thing down all the way to $5.66 per share. At the peak today, or uh, on, on Friday, AMC hit $6.10 per share in a pretty decent little ramp up here, and then got rejected straight back down under $6 right? And you were, for most of the day, trading like right at $6. That was the resistance level. And then you started to fall towards the end of the day. You kind of went higher in after hours and then sold off a little bit the last couple of minutes. But it looks like they do not want the stock above $6. 
And above $6 is where I think AMC starts to get one a lot more attention, but it starts to make their trade really unprofitable because keep in mind, a lot of shorts shorted this thing at the lows of 2023. A lot of shorts were getting into this at sub $4 in the $4 to $5 range. So if AMC breaks above $6 per share, you're down 20, 30% on your overall equity in this trade. And not to mention the cost of borrow fees, which are a lot worse than that, right? These cost of borrow fees have cost hedge funds in Q1 alone about $2 billion. In Q1, there was only about five to $600 million sold short in AMC stock. That means just cost of borrow fees alone have really made your position unprofitable. You're likely down about 150% just off of cost to borrow fees alone, not to mention the fact that AMC stock continues to move higher. And that's exactly from what you can see here. I mean, if this does not look bullish to you, then I don't know what charts you look at and, and what stocks you look at, because this is a clear and concise upward movement. You have broken above the 50 and the 100 day moving averages, and you have remained above these for a while now right? You've been above this ever since April 27th. Tomorrow is going to be May 8th when we start trading. And you've, you really haven't come down to this level. Any of the wicks that you got, even the low of Friday was bullish, right? You wicked down to $5.60 per share and then retraced all the way back up to $6.11 intraday, which was the high. And then you came down a little bit, sure, but you're a lot closer to the high than you are to the low. And typically, if earnings are going to be a consistent downtrend negative after earnings, kind of sucks to say, one of the, the only bearish times after earnings that we have seen, one of two, was last earnings, where AMC stock on the day of earnings fell 6%, the day after earnings fell 8%. You never went back towards the high in this scenario right? Even the day after earnings, you uh, close at $6.57 per share. The next day later, you close at $6.10 per share. And then your first green day after earnings, you close at $6.58 per share. You did not get back up to the close levels that you see in the day after earnings. So you did not retrace to hit a higher high. And that is what AMC has continued to do is hit a higher high and to set higher lows. So I do think when you factor in those factors, uh, it, it, it paints a pretty bullish picture for AMC. Now, if we take a look at the option activity for last week, 259 orders totaling $172.14 million, positive order value at about 4% for the week. On Friday, you've seen 58 orders totaling $23.69 million, positive order value of again, 3%. They use any means necessary to push down AMC. And a lot of it does have to do with the options. Some notable orders right here. Some pretty big ones. May 19th, $10 put for $2.65 million. That's a very large trade. A June 16th, $10 put for $1.51 million. A July 21st, $13 put for $1.8 million. All in all, over $5 million of put positions that were set during the last couple of minutes of trading on Friday, worth about $5 million, right? These are institutional trades. These are institutional uh, investors that are trying to push down the price of AMC. They're trying to suppress it. That is quite literally a fact at this point. They don't want the stock above $6 per share. Now, if you take a look at the option activity for this upcoming week, you got about 18,000 calls in the money, 53,000 calls out the money, in the money puts at 16,662, out the money puts at 92,465. So decent option numbers here, but it's really next week where you start to get some bigger numbers. May 19th, 52,000 calls in the money, 302,000 calls out the money, 193,000 puts in the money, and 313,000 puts that are out of the money. So I'm going to be watching how this um, May 19th option expiration really starts to populate, right? Do you start to get a lot more options placed for May 19th? Or do you even start to see a lot placed for this upcoming week? Because 
it's no surprise here. Like this doesn't take a high IQ or high education level to understand that AMC typically does rally after earnings. About 80% of the time, AMC goes up 50 to 150% after earnings. Like, like that's a statistical fact. Whether it's a day or two after earnings or a week or two after earnings, that's a bigger debate there, right? That's where some of these statistics start to change because most of the time it is a couple days after earnings where you sell off and then you start to rally. Sometimes it can be a week or two before you hit that bottom and then you start to rally from there. Now, this time around, I think it's going to be a lot sooner rather than later, obviously, because AMC just looks so bullish already. If we do go ahead and give you guys a rundown of kind of my base case, best case, worst case scenario for this week, right? Well, like we said, 50 to 150% rallies are pretty typical following earnings. Now, 150% would be like the best case scenario, right? Let's be real with ourselves. 150% before we got an update from the courts would put AMC stock at a very good place. Let's just say that 150% rally would be the stock at almost $15 per share. Now, whether that all happened this week or not, I think that would be a bigger debate. I think it'd be unlikely that you would see this whole rally in a week. I think it would be more likely to get, uh, you know, a, a base case, like a 50% rally for this week. Um, and let's see. If the base case is for a 50% rally this week, that's going to put the stock roughly at about $9 per share. That would be the peak of the last earnings or two earnings ago that we got on December 1st, 2022, which was not all too long ago. I know the months are really starting to fly so far in 2023, but December doesn't feel like it was that long ago. And you peaked out at $9.00. 15 cents per share. That would be a 50% rally from here just to do what we did back here in November and December after you had earnings on November 8th, right? Uh, you started to rally. Uh, the next day later, you fell about 8%. And then the second and third day after earnings, you really started to rally, right? So that's kind of what I expect could happen, a 50% rally. Uh, if especially if history does repeat itself on the worst case scenario worst case scenario in my personal opinion you fall back down to the 150 day moving averages a drop of about 12 percent but kind of my base case scenario at this point it sounds crazy but would be a you know 50 ish percent rally whether that happens in the beginning of the week or the end of the week is pretty important as well if you kind of are flat or you know, up or down just a little bit for the first couple days of the week, and then you start to rally like crazy on Thursday or Friday, well, maybe that rally leads into the next week. Or if it starts early in the week, maybe you get there a lot faster, right? I, I think that is all important to keep in mind, you know, that that, that it's, it's about the timing as well. Stocks don't trade all day, every day. There is a weekend involved. So if you rally on Thursday or Friday, well, I think that would be likely to continue into the next weekend, or if you rally in the beginning of the week, I think you could get to this price prediction a lot faster, which again is a rally for about 50%. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm really not going to hate on a 30, 40% rally or a 20% rally as well. This is where I think AMC could go based off of the historical performance of AMC rallying after earnings. It doesn't mean it has to, I'm not a financial advisor. Do not make trades based off of this. You will lose all of your money, right? Don't trade based off of uh, one person opinion or the historical trends of AMC. That's a very bad trading strategy. This is to say where AMC could go. But hey, am I going to be unhappy with 20, 30 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent? Maybe it goes higher. Absolutely not. So keep that in mind as well. That is going to do it for this video. Not too much else to actually say. Again, you're going to have inflation reports coming on Wednesday in the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey that comes on Friday. That will also be very, very important for AMC, for this market. It will affect literally everything um, based off what those data points do. And I can't say here and forecast what those data points are going to do.
So that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. If you guys also want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. There's a lot more earnings for this week as well. Could be some big runners in there with these strategies that we imply during earnings season. It's to really mitigate risk and to maximize potential profits or maximize potential rewards upon these earnings catalysts. So if you guys want to join me, see the trades that I have currently out on this market, as well as AMC stock, link down below in the description of this video. Nonetheless, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.